Insightful Podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 122. Return to school during COVID. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my grateful and cheerful co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing all right. How about you? I'm doing okay. How was your week this week? It's been all right. Boring. I could tell because every time I talk to you uh, over the phone from work, you seem to be very bored. Um. Well... Got to, you know, enjoy it while it lasts, you know. That's right. You'll be going back to school soon, hence the reason for this podcast. Yeah. So it's about that time for kids to head back to school. We thought that COVID was just going to be a bad memory by now, but it seems it's here to stay for a while longer. So how do your kids feel about going back to school in the time of COVID? How do you as a parent feel? And how can we make the most of the situation while still trying to keep our family safe and mitigate any anxiety we might have under the current climate. That's our topic today. Before we dive into it, though, uh, I would invite our audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can get audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. Video versions of all the network podcasts can be listed as Insights into Things. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, pretty much any place you can get a podcast. I would also invite you to write in, give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. On Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. Or on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things. Or you can get links to all those on our website at insights into things.com. Ready to get started? Sure. All right. So returning to school during COVID. So the research for this uh, topic comes from the Cleveland Clinic. They say after the challenges of last year, kids finally get to be kids again. This upcoming school year means being reunited with friends, having some sort of regular schedule again, and finally having the chance to show off those new clothes, backpacks, and clever school supplies. Good for them and good for the parents, right? While there are still concerns about keeping kids safe from the latest COVID-19 variants, at least parents won't have to worry about teaching Common Core math or listening to lessons in between conference calls. Unfortunately, some kids might be a little apprehensive about going back. For them, home meant a safe haven from several stressors that they faced at school. On the other hand, kids who are excited about returning to the classroom will now have to adjust to learning with COVID-19 protocols in place. Either way, the transition back to school might be a little stressful for your child. So let's stop right there for a second and let me ask you, how do you feel about going back to school? Because all of last year and the second half of the year before you were at home, schooling at home. So how do you feel about going back to school in person? I probably would feel a little better if I wasn't going into my freshman year of high school. Yeah. Yeah, that does complicate things, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, not only is it a transition to an entire school, but freshman year is a lot different than 7th and 8th grade. And... A lot of changes are going to take place there. You're right. And just in general, there's changes. But I think they're good changes. And I think you'll be able to, to cope with them. 
But do you have any anxiety about COVID-19 and being around other people? I mean, yeah, I haven't really been around people that much in the past year. And I am going and while I am vaccinated, um, I'm still I still have like anxiety of people in a way. Um, I know I used to be like socially awkward when I was fir- when before it even happened, and now it's kind of started growing to the point where I'm kind of afraid to be around people physically. Yeah, and I think a lot of people are getting to that point, and it's it's one of those things we're we're gonna have to learn to deal with for a little while longer. Yeah, and it's a pretty scary thing when <clears throat> mommy, the most extroverted person out of all of us is afraid to talk to people and doesn't really want to be bothered at work. Yeah, well, you're right. You know, it's it's an adjustment. So they do talk about change. They say while good change can also be stressful, in general, going back to school is a big change. It's a whole new setting, especially for kids who are going either from elementary school to middle school or, like you, from middle school to high school, says pediatric psychologist Vanessa Jensen. It's a whole new world, and all of a sudden, they're expected to know what they're doing. It's a huge shift from being in their little space at home to now being in, the, in, the, in this world of back to school. So, how do you recognize when your child is having a tough time? If you're not sure if your child is having a hard time with the transition back to school, think about how they normally act when they're stressed and look for those behaviors. For example, if your child gets headaches or stomach aches when they're anxious, you'll know that school is stressing them out should they start having them more frequently. We tend to go toward behavior We tend to go toward certain behaviors when we're stressed. My suggestion is for parents to think about what their child does when they get stressed in a new situation, she says. Think about the behaviors that they usually revert to when whether it's hiding in the background of a small group or acting out and trying to be the funny kid. Once you recognize what they tend to do under stress, that's probably what you're going to see as they enter into a new situation. So what do you think are some of your stressor signs that, that are kind of tell that you're a little freaked out? Um, let's see. Um, you do have breakdowns. Yeah, breakdowns are probably the biggest thing, but that's kind of an obvious sign. Right. I mean, everyone who has breakdowns is kind of an obvious sign. But do you feel physically ill? Do you get stomach aches? Do you get headaches? Um, sometimes I have a harder time breathing because I feel like I somewhat hyperventilate sometimes whenever I'm stressed. So that's probably kind of one of the physical attributes I kind of associate myself with whenever I feel anxious. I can see that. Um, there are some points where I get headaches, typically to the point if I do have a freak out, sometimes afterwards, if it was really bad, I would have a headache. Yeah. Uh. See, for me, when I, when I'm freaked out, usually I'll talk more or I'll try to make more jokes and it's all an attempt to try to calm myself down. Like this happens a lot at doc- doctor's appointments, you know, cause I get freaked out going to the doctor. So I'll try to crack jokes. I'll try to, you know, lighten the mood a little bit. I'll try to have conversations, change the subject, that type of thing. So anytime I'm doing that, I know I'm starting to have a little bit of anxiety, you know. Um, There are some other attributes I think I might kind of associate myself with. Uh, One would probably be would probably be like the opposite of what you're doing and it's like I kind of stay silent. Right, you pull you pull back into yourself there and and cr- try to like extricate yourself from the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um I'd also sometimes like fiddle with my hands or do something to distract myself. And a lot of people do that, sort of that nervous twitch type thing. Yeah. So we're going to have to keep an eye on these things, you know. I think there's a certain anxiety for all of us. I am I was dead set against you going back to school last year because of how bad things were. I, I don't know if things are much better now, so I'm not thrilled about you going back to school. The fact that you do have uh, the – you did get the vaccine and you're fully vaccinated helps to alleviate a lot of that 
anxiety for me. Uh, I also want to see what kind of protocols they're doing at school, what kind of cleaning they're doing. Are they, you know, they, they're going back and forth on mask mandates today. I understand there is a mask mandate for schools. So that makes me feel better that everyone's going to be wearing masks, but they're not always going to be wearing masks and who's going to be enforcing that. And, you know, I want to, I want to get a report from you as to what the school's doing and whether or not you feel comfortable at the school with the protocols that they're taking. And then we'll go from there. Okay. I'll try taking note of that. Okay. So uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about helping teens make the adjustment. We'll be right back. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about returning to school during COVID. So we're going to talk a little bit about helping teens make the adjustment. As parents, we remember our teenage years. Some of us were wild and loud. Some of us were shy and quiet. But regardless of our personalities, most of us probably kept our crutches, our craziness, and our challenging times under wraps. Dr. Jensen advises us to keep that in mind when it comes to teens. While it's natural to want to know every single thing that's going on in your teen's life, prying or being overbearing will only make things worse. If your child has been able to handle things in general, give them some space. But if you're worried, you can always say things like, you seem a little stressed, you know I'm around, or have you talked to your friends? And if they have talked to their friends, you can always follow up with, well, you want to talk to me, I'm here. She calls this her raindrop theory. Basically, this is dropping little hints that your child can reach out to you should things become unbearable. Dr. Jensen explains, you just put the little raindrops out there by saying, you know I'm around or I'm going to be in my study if you want to talk. You put those little hints out there and kids will reach out when they feel comfortable, she says. Reassure them gently and gradually. If you overwhelm your child with questions, and I compared this to throwing buckets of water on them, they're going to think, whoa, I'm not going there. So give them some space. They know you're there. Just keep reassuring them that if things get bad, you'll be there for them. Now we all know that some kids think their parents will never be able to relate to their teenage struggles. In cases like these, a cool aunt or uncle can help. Dr. Jensen says that you can sprinkle the raindrops in the direction of another adult that you and your teen trust so that so they are encouraged to reach out to someone if they are having a tough time. Give them some room and let the raindrops flow. Let your teen know that you are available to talk, but if they're not comfortable with you for whatever reason, make sure they do have someone to talk to. You could say, Aunt Susan is a good person to talk to, or Uncle John asks, uh, asks about you all the time. This can create little trails to other people when your child is kind of quiet to you. So how do you deal with this stuff? I know you, you talk to mommy and I, and I, I think we pretty much have an open line of communication. Are there things that you don't talk to mommy and daddy about? 
And you don't have to go into specifics, obviously, if you're not comfortable. Well, I can think of one specific example. I mean, I've tried talking to you guys about it, uh, but uh, it's not the easiest topic for me to discuss with you guys. Do you have someone that you can talk to about it? I actually talked to um, Aunt Chris about this. Okay. When we went to visit her, so... So, so you do have an outlet for it, at least. Yeah. Did you find that helpful? Yeah, I did. Oh, good. Now, do you have Aunt Chris's contact information if you wanted to talk to her any other time? Yeah, I do. I have her on Facebook Messenger, so I can probably message her if I do need help with oh, it. Okay. Well, that's good. So you at least have that outlet there that you can go to. Are there friends of yours that you think might not have someone else that they can talk to, or do they not feel comfortable talking to their parents about certain things? I could kind of say it in one of my friends, maybe not ha being able to talk to their uh, parents about certain things, um, and thus they kind of bring it to me. So you are, you are one of those outlets that they can talk to then? I think so, yeah. And they talk to you in confidence then? Mostly, yeah. That's good. I think it's important. You know, we had talked about this last week with feeling like a burden and the therapeutic value of just being able to talk about things. Um, but who you talk to about those things can be very important. Some people you, you don't feel comfortable talking about with certain subjects. And I can totally understand that. Um, but that doesn't mean you don't talk about those subjects. That just means you kind of have to find someone that you can talk to about them. Yeah. So what prompted you to talk to Aunt Chris about the subject? Um, I kind of felt like she could, do, she had much more knowledge on the subject than I think you guys did. Okay. For the most part, at least. Well, and that's, that's a brilliant reason for going to someone else if they're a subject matter expert on it. Yeah. And if, if it was helpful, then you made the right decision. Do you advise your friends to talk to other people about any of the issues that they're running into? Um, I have been trying to mention to them. Um, if they do have issues, um, they can always talk to me or someone else if they do have problems. So okay. I've kind of been steering them in the, that direction. Now, when you were in... You're obviously going into high school now. In your middle school, did the teachers or your counselors make themselves available to have these kinds of discussions, or were they kind of distant? I mean, I remember that uh, the counselor had actually um, set up various appointments um, with all the kids, kind of like the, she'd like ask us questions about stuff and kind of get our opinions on everything and was always like, if you ever need me, I'm here, so... I definitely think we had a pretty supportive guidance. Yeah, can you lend me 20 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, really? Well, you have to understand, when I was in school, my guidance counselor was almost non-existent. You know, I think I talked in, in – because I was in the same school for six years with the same guidance counselor. I started in seventh grade. And in six years, I think I may have seen them twice. Once when I got there and then once when they set up some appointment – because really all our guidance counselors did was tell us what we needed to do to get into college and where to take the tests and stuff like that. They really weren't there to provide much in the way of life guidance. How, how have your counselors done with that? Honestly, when I had actually gone to the um, office the one time, I had actually seen like a message where it's like everything they talk about in the room stays between, basically stays in the room unless it's harmful to you or someone else. Which makes sense because then they're legally obligated to get someone else involved. Like, for instance, if it's self-harm, suicide thoughts, something like that, they then have to bring in a professional yeah. for stuff like that. So have you ever thought to go to your counselor with any of the issues that you feel you need to talk about? I mean, I probably should have, but um, most of the issues kind of came up. During COVID, and I was never really in the building. Okay. I mean, I could have probably, like, scheduled a conference call, which I kind of did the one time, but it was mainly to schedule stuff. Right, right. I remember that. But I don't think I've ever really talked my issues about. Okay. I just, I don't know. I just never really felt I needed to. 
Right. No, I understand. Again, if they're not the right person that you feel comfortable with, you know, even though it's their job, then they're not the right person because whether it's their job or not, you ultimately need to be comfortable with it. Do you feel you have an outlet now that you can go to or that you have options if you have something you need to talk about? Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. You know, Aunt Chris, you, my friends, that kind of stuff. Good. It's important to have those options available to you. I don't ever want you to feel, you know, if there's an issue you're not comfortable talking to us about and you don't have someone, let us know that you have an issue and we can help you find somebody. Okay. So, do you have any issues that you want to talk about regarding going back to school during COVID? I mean, I have a ton of issues going back to school. Anyway. And I know, I'm not talking about the ones in general. I'm just talking about anything that's specific to COVID. Like, do you feel safe going back to school? Mm. Not necessarily for the most part. Okay. I think you're kind of in the same boat that that I'm in with you going back to school. Yeah. It's one of these things that we need to see how they're handling it. Uh, The state of New Jersey is mandating some of these protocols now, which makes me feel a little bit better. But how the school's implementing those is really what it's going to come down to. Yeah. So I think we kind of have to try it, give it a shot, and see where we're at. And, you know, if after a few days when we've seen all the classrooms and we see what the protocols are like and how serious the school's taking them, we can make a determination of whether or not we feel safe or not there. Okay. And if we don't, we'll see what our other options are. Because if you don't feel safe, I'm not going to feel safe with you going, and I'm not going to have you... You know, going five days a week into an environment that you're not safe in. Mm -hmm. So we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, but we have to get in there and see what the practices are like right off the bat. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take another break. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about dealing with rebellion against COVID-19 rules because we seem to be seeing a lot of that in the media lately. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about returning to school during COVID-19. And today, and and now, we're going to talk about how to deal with rebellion against COVID-19 safety rules. You rebel scum. Oh my god. (laughs) Why did I not see that coming? (laughs) Anyway. You've been doing everything you can to keep those under your roof safe for well over a year. Your child has been on board for most for the most part. But one thing is inevitable. Thanos. <laughs> Thanos. <laughs> I'm I sorry. am inevitable. Look, if you make those references, I hey, go right ahead. Pop culture references are welcome <laughs> in this podcast. Okay. They're going to have friends who are still living in 2019. No masks, no social distancing, and no regard for COVID-19 whatsoever. What do you do if your child starts challenging the rules? Dr. Jensen suggests helping them understand that staying safe is not just about them, but it's also about all the people 
all the other people who they care about. Talk to your child about what you believe and where the family as a whole stands. Don't just talk about the risks to them. Talk about the risks of spreading COVID-19 to those around you. You could say something like, You know it's important to our family to stay safe for all kinds of reasons, but more importantly, you have grandma to think about, your dad and your sister. For teens and tweens, it comes down to helping them realize that right now is not the time to just focus on themselves. This is difficult because these age groups can be self-focused. They also can be easily influenced by their peers. But again, you want to encourage them to make the best choices for themselves and your family, especially when you're not around, she says. And if the going gets tough, and the going has been tough for over a year now, you got to get help. Raising kids during a pandemic hasn't been easy on anyone. When parents try to push through the tough times or troubleshoot everything on their own, the process can be even more challenging and draining. Instead of going it alone, Dr. Jensen advises reaching out to the people in your children's orbit. This includes teachers, coaches, their pediatrician, and even the school counselor like we talked about. She also recommends taking care of yourself first and foremost. You're not going to be any good to your kids if you aren't taking care of yourself and you're the biggest role model your kids have. We all think that kids look to their peers for role models, but they do rely on their parents for the big things. So the best role model you can be is the person who takes care of themselves and then takes care of their kids, she says. And if you have questions about how your child's doing, try talking to their teachers, coaches, scout leader, and other important people in their life. Ask what they're seeing, then talk to your child. If things are beyond your control, reach out to your pediatrician's office for referrals. Your guidance counselor can also make referrals for you if you need more help. So with that in mind, how do you have, have you run into people? I mean, you haven't run into a lot of people at all. None of us have, but have you encountered people that are rebelling against the COVID-19 protocols? I mean, the good thing is, I don't think any of my friends are rebelling against it, which is good. Right. So, that's Absolutely. Um, but I'm pretty sure at some point I will encounter people who are rebelling against it. Um, and, well, that'll be fun, I guess. How You've been going out of the house for, for marching band now. How has marching band been handling? Because I think that's probably the best barometer we have right now with how school's going to be. How how have you felt with marching band? I thought all right. We always, you know, keep our distance and now there's a mandate where wherever whenever we're inside we wear a mask and people have been doing that. Now you weren't doing that before the state mandate though, right? Uh no, but I would typically kind of stay away. P- people were kind of spread out for the most part, so it was still kind of all right. Okay. So before that mask mandate, was there a large majority of people that were voluntarily wearing masks? Because I know we were sending you with one. I know it's kind of hard to wear a mask when, you, when you're playing a musical instrument that you have to blow into. I did see one or two people who um, would wear masks whenever okay. they were around. Um, and that's kind of what I run into at work. Most of the people that I have at work don't, don't wear masks. Uh, they don't really worry too much about social distancing. They kind of did last year where, you know, we, the company itself forced people to spread out at the lunchroom. We staggered our lunch hours. So we kind of forced that extra caution. And I don't know, I, I guess when the state lifted some of its requirements, we, we kind of laxed off on some of that stuff. Right now, I'm probably the only person in the front office who wears a mask. I don't wear it while I'm in my office because, you know, I have my own office. I have two air filters that pretty much cycle the air in my office every 10 minutes or so. Uh, So I'm very comfortable in my office with clean air. But anytime I step out of my office, the mask goes on. But I don't see anybody else in the office that wear masks when they're moving around. So that's kind of... 
discouraging for me. Uh, what about in school? Because you've been going into the school itself for marching band stuff. Have they had like barriers up and hand sanitizer and the normal stuff you would expect? Um, I haven't seen any barriers. Pretty sure there are um, hand sanitizers in certain rooms. We haven't really been like staying in the areas, but I do remember there was. Uh, summer school and one time during band camp we ended up passing them and I um, didn't really see anyone wearing a mask. Now did you see that they were spread out in the classroom at least? Uh, I never really got a glimpse of them inherently in the classroom. Okay. Um, I haven't really been able to see much of the protocol going on. So we're going to have to wait until you start school. How about when we go out in public? Do you notice whether people are wearing masks or distancing and stuff. Yeah, and for the most part, wherever we go, people are wearing masks, or at least they're distancing themselves from each other. And, and we are highly restricted in where we go, when we go, and, you know, if we wind up something, like if we go out to eat, for instance, and we're, if we walk into a restaurant that's very crowded and obviously not ad adhering to any rules, we'll turn around and walk out. Um, so any restaurants that we stay at, we make sure that they're seating people in safe distances and so forth. What else have you done outside of the house? We've done kind of our mini vacation, our day trip vacation. Uh, you've gone shopping, right? How, how have people been at the supermarket and stuff? They've been all right. Um, people, there have been a decent amount of people wearing masks. People are still social distancing. And uh, the last time we actually went to BJ's for the first time, like, people used to just line up. And then, like, when someone was done at the, um, re at the like, self-checkout register, the other person, another person would go. And, like, we were all distancing themselves. And the last time we went... It was the first time where people, like, actually got in line again right. behind the registers, which was kind of a strange change that I kind of had to get used to, I guess. So were they at least distancing themselves in the reg at the registers or no? Uh, I th sort of. Okay. Uh, not as much as before, but they still seemed like they were somewhat distancing. How do you feel about the safety rules of COVID? Are you going to continue to wear a mask even if it's not mandated? Yeah, probably. And you're okay with the social distancing and all that stuff? I mean, yeah, it's kind of made me want to kind of stay away from people for the most part, which may or may not be a good thing. Now, have you been going out of the house and playing with any of the kids in the neighborhood? No, not really. Okay, so, so you're still maintaining that strict level of COVID protocol now. Yeah. How do you think that's affected you, though? Do you think... Being in the house so much has had a negative effect on you? I mean, the fact that I used to just be, like, antisocial before and now kind of not even wanting to meet people in person at this point, that's probably the main negative side effect that I've kind of gotten. So it kind of drove that antisocial side of you then? To the point where I was, where now I'm actually kind of afraid of people and I can't. I kind of have a phobia of people in a way. So you don't you don't have like mommy, for instance. Mommy mommy's kind of itching to get back to things because of that that extrovert that she is. And I, I think the protocols, while she's doing a very good job adhering to them, I think the protocols chafe on people like mommy who need to have that social interaction. It's it's caused cancellations of a lot of the things that she wants to do and she enjoys doing. And a lot of the things that she does are those support things that she needs, and she hasn't been able to get that. So I, I think that's been a been a problem for mommy. Have you had anything like that where you've you've wanted to do something but you can't, and it's caused some consternation? I mean, it used to be not being able to see my friends, and now I've kind of learned to realize that and now i'm really only like speaking with my friends on the phone or the one actual time i was able to socialize where we were like like almost a block away from each other just screaming yeah but you are still socializing with your friends through technology at this point you're not completely isolating yourself i mean yeah 
That's good. Well, and that's, I think that's kind of been our savior during this whole ordeal has been technology. You know, a lot of people have taken advantage of technology to keep those Zoom calls going and the phone calls and FaceTime and, you know, all the stuff that, that people have used to keep in touch. It hasn't been an adequate um, alternative, but I think it's it's one of those things where you're making the most out of a bad situation. Yeah. So I think that was all we had today. We're going to take a quick break, come back. We'll get your closing remarks and finish up with uh, the podcast business. All righty. All right. Go for your closing remarks. All righty. So to all of the teens and parents out there, going back to school during COVID is going to be hard on pretty much everyone. Whether it be just having to go back to school after pretty much not having a year of school last year, or just having to deal with the COVID-19 protocols and everything like that. No matter what the reason, it's going to probably be stressful on on everyone, and, well, we'll get through it. We've so far gone through... Almost an entire year of this, we'll probably be able to get through the rest of it. COVID will probably be around for a while, but it is getting better. And if you are feeling these, if you if your child does have these anxious thoughts, make sure they have a good support system, and make sure they're also following COVID rules so that COVID nineteen can be over sooner rather than later. Okay, and we're all wishing for that, that's for sure. Before we do go, I do want to once again invite our audience to subscribe to the podcast. Audio versions of this podcast can be found listed as Insights into Teens. Video versions of all of our podcasts are available listed as Insights into Things. You can find them anywhere you can get a podcast, Apple, Spotify, Google, and so forth. I would also invite folks to write to us. Give us your feedback. Give us some show suggestions. We did start putting some uh, uh, new show schedule together. We're working on some new shows for us. We've got a couple already in the pipeline. But we're always looking for suggestions on new topics to talk about, the stuff that affects our audience. Um, We'll do the research. We'll write it up. We'll address it and talk about it, and hopefully we can help some folks out. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can get high-res versions of all of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We do stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can find audio versions of this podcast on the web at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. You can get us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast or on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things or links to all those on our website at insightsintothings.com and you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother Sam. Which we'll be recording this weekend, so we'll have a new one, uh, new Insights into Tomorrow next week. Yay! So, uh, but that's it for today. Thank you for listening and watching. That's another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.